All right, so let's talk about how to invest in music royalties. We know we got the Omari NFT marketplace that's about to pop off here soon. And so it'd be helpful to educate some of our listeners on this. Yes. All right, so there are many different types of music streaming royalties. If you haven't seen our episode with the Music Money Makeover Show, Casey Graham, then go check that out because he's, uh, you know, a thorough expert in that. But uh, for some of these, it's just going to be the streaming royalties. Mm -hmm. Uh, For some of them, it might be like the writer's share. So definitely look uh, at where you're buying them and what's actually being offered. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm not going to go over like what exactly all those different shares and all that mean Mm -hmm. Uh, but for for simplicity's sake the streaming royalties is just what you receive from the distribution platforms like spotify or uh youtube Mm -hmm. or amazon or you know that that type of thing so amazon music that would be uh or apple music something like that so we have Omari MT Marketplace, Royal.io, Co-Write, uh, Royalty Exchange, and Song Vest are the ones that we're primarily going to be looking at. And then there are some funds, uh, like we've talked about, that are buying up catalogs, mm-hmm. and then they're selling off, like, you know, the stake in their fund mm-hmm. to people looking for alternative investment classes. Right. Uh, but most people watching this probably are not going to qualify uh, for those. A lot of times that's like an accredited investor thing Mm -hmm. and you have to either earn at least, I believe it's like a quarter million if you're single or over 300,000 for married couples or have a net worth over a million dollars to be an accredited investor. Mm -hmm. Uh, So instead what some people can do is get the artist to sell like a package Mm -hmm. almost so you have these streaming royalties that the artist is going to give to somebody who wants to buy them but Mm -hmm. there's not going to be an expectation of profit uh so that it doesn't count as a security Mm -hmm. and then as well you can give away other benefits so it'd be like more of a package thing so it can be that i'll give you meet and greet access Mm -hmm. this will be good for tickets for all my shows in 2022 all all, yeah Yeah. signed merch Mm -hmm. like it can be good for all those things so it's more of like a bundle Mm -hmm. uh and then uh the difference with some of these marketplaces is also that the secondary sales are going to be a lot easier on some of them because they have NFTs Mm -hmm. incorporated with it. So Omari, NFT Marketplace, number one, uh, specializes in indie artists a lot. Uh, We may also get some bigger artists, but uh, we we serve a lot of indie artists. We have a bunch of independent playlisters and influencers. And so we have a network already in place, not only to just sell, Right. the song royalties, but also to market them within right. our network. So a playlister might be one to buy it and then put it on all their playlists if they want. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, if they own a share of, of the song, that's something they can do, and then right. other people just benefit from that. Right. Um, the, the caveat with the Omari Marketplace is that it's obviously we're a Christian-based company. Right. Uh, so... Not to say all songs would be Christian on there, but it does mean that we wouldn't have like entities or songs that would go against that. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas if you know you want to, let's let's say there's a song that you do like, but maybe there's something questionable in it, uh, that might be on a different marketplace, but it wouldn't be on our marketplace, just right. FYI. Right, so right, right. that's the type of songs you would get on the Omari NFT marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other big thing about the the Omari marketplace is that you buy the song royalties, uh, like you buy the NFTs in the Omari token. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's super simple to buy. You can do it with credit card, debit card. You can actually do it with crypto. Um, you can you can transfer <coughs> BTC or ETH or uh, USDC over to Omari and then buy it that way as well. Or you can buy it with the rally token. Like there's a bunch of ways to buy and right. there'll be videos on that and, and all that, but a bunch of ways to buy, but you buy it with the token and you get your distributions in the token. Right. So you can either take it out in Omari or you can leave it in. And if Omari goes up, then your distribution just went up. Right. So pro pro and con. That's right. Uh, next would be Royal. 
Uh, so you can also buy NFTs that have the song royalties attached to them mm-hmm. on Royal.io. You don't have to be an accredited investor. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you don't have to be accredited for Omari or or Royal or I- any of these. You do not have to be accredited because these are these are not funds. Um, but with Royal, there's no utility token. Uh, you can buy with credit card, debit card. So that is a good thing for the NFTs. Um, Additionally, they they typically launch larger people. Uh, like that's their target market. They're going after the the major artists or like the the big home run hitter that they can get. Uh, they have launched a couple people that arguably might be like mid sized artists, mm-hmm. uh, but they're still you know substantial audience size. Uh, but other than that, um, t- to my knowledge, there's no army of of playlisters behind Royal itself. There might be behind like the the artists, like mm. the people who are getting signed on. So mm. they might be attached to a label who does have connections with, you know, the, their playlists on Spotify, so on and so forth. Right. Uh, but Royal itself would not be a marketing firm. They'd be an NFT marketplace. Mm. All right, just the d- distinction. Right. Uh, Co-Write would be the next one. They actually started as selling royalties. It's like you buy the share of the song right at the beginning, mm-hmm. and then it's not it's not in the form of an NFT, so that you couldn't really sell it to somebody after. Like if you want to sell your share, it wasn't really like a marketplace like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are working on their blockchain technology to be able to do that so yes. they recognize that, that like hey that's a good idea we should do that right uh and they are working on that they typically do have smaller artists as well um like anybody could go on there and set it up to to sell their their royalties uh so you do get a lot of smaller artists who a lot of times didn't meet their their goal right. of if they wanted to raise like a thousand bucks for their song mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times they didn't meet it because the even if you have fans, like most of the everyday fans or whatever are gonna have like ten bucks or twenty bucks towards that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you do need both your fans and people who are traders or Web three investors or, right. or that sort of deal. Right. Um, but you know, I like a lot of things about Co-Rate. I like I like some things about Royal. Um, we're we're not necessarily necessarily saying like any of these is better than the others. Um, obviously we'd be biased towards Amari anyway, mm-hmm. but uh, we're just trying to give like an accurate overview of how you can buy these royalties. What's the difference when you're buying them in different places? So right. the other good thing about Co-Rate is that um, they do have distribution. Mm-hmm. So they are actually distributing the songs. Like whenever somebody signs up for uh, to sell their song royalties on co-write, they're distributing through them so that they just pay out right, right, all right. the people. Yeah. So that is nice. Um, like I said, it's not not the hardest thing in the world to to not have the distribution through them. Like you can still stay on DistroKid or TuneCore or CD Baby or whatever mm-hmm. uh, with the Omari Marketplace. Uh, but if you didn't want to touch it at all. Then co-write would be the thing. Obviously, right. inside the distro kid, you can just set the splits, and it's essentially doing the same thing. It's not right. that hard. Yeah. Uh, and then last two, kind of similar, both of them, royalty exchange, song vest. Uh, these have been around a little bit longer, and it's more of like a a bid on a royalty exchange. So uh, they did just launch like the NFT your music. Uh, so they are trying to get into that field as well because like obviously everybody sees like that is that is something that's smart to do um, but on royalty exchange it might just be like a bidder for a catalog so mm-hmm. it might just be auction style this catalog is going for 50k if you got 50k you can buy the whole thing if not you right. know, they're not going to split it up right. uh, into a bunch of shares um, but they've been around and they do have some you know some some well-known projects on there uh that i don't think they really get a ton of the volume necessarily uh but they in terms of dollar amount you know they have had a good uh over 100 mil uh, raised by rights holders and then they've done about 1300 deals so 
over their lifespan. Um, not the the most deals. Obviously, we've promoted. I think it's over eighteen thousand artists so mm-hmm. far. So mm-hmm. it, it just depends on your business model. If you're going for the bigger deals, you're obviously not going to do as many of them. If you're going for you know, we'll, we'll take all the indie artists and try to launch them. You're going to do more, right? Uh, so, just depends. Yeah. Just depends on what your what your money is looking like. What, mm-hmm. what you want to buy, hundred um, percent, so on and so forth. And the Songfest is kind of the, the same deal, but they do have more of like a share model for some of their stuff. So, you can find cheaper prices on a lot of the things there. Um, but yeah, that's like the breakdown. How do you invest in songs or how do you buy shares of streaming royalties or uh, writer shares? Um, so you, you will find a bit more writer's share. Uh, uh, there's you know two shares, the writers and the publishers. So you, you'll find more of those on yeah. a royalty exchange um, or like a song vest. Uh, for the other ones, typically it's just sticking with the streaming royalties share of it. But yeah. That is the breakdown. Yeah. So there will be a link in this video for every uh, every one of these exchanges mentioned. And if you guys want to apply to launch your streaming royalties, sell streaming royalties to fans, you can mm-hmm. do that at amariamc.com slash apply. We'll take a look at that. And uh, if it's a good fit, if we think people will, you know, obviously – like that song yeah uh, if we like that song then we will do the marketing for it um and get you on your way yes indeed sounds good